Hey YouTube, this is Zach with Achilles Financial and today we're going to be talking about Lyft Inc. as they announced earnings after hours. This is going to be their earnings review and I am leveraging TD Ameritrade's platform as well as I will be showcasing the earnings deck later on. What I want to highlight is you can see that Lyft actually had a very strong open today and across the board if you look at how the performance was today, they actually did very, very well, coming up more than 5% on the day. This was largely seen as a very strong day by the NASDAQ, a lot of strong growth in tech names. Now, what you are seeing right here on the reverse side is they announced earnings after hours, and it was a pretty significant drop, now more than 6%. You can see on the screen before this, it was down about 5.8%. So the stock continues to drop and that is largely based off of their not great Q4 results. So there's a few different things that came out and I wanna be leveraging their deck to kind of walk through that information and why I personally am hesitant to continue to invest in the rideshare business. And I say continue, I have not entered and I will continue to keep my money on the sideline, but I wanna walk through what that will look like. So let's head over to their slide deck. So here is the Q4 fiscal 2021 earnings that came out today. This is from their slide deck. What I wanna highlight is they are showcasing strong revenue growth. This is 70% year over year. And this is another instance where a very high growth company due to the fact that they are not profitable is getting killed by the stockholders because no one wants to be holding a company that really doesn't have a clear path to profitability. The revenue growth was great in terms of this number, but unfortunately you're seeing a significant share of losses growing at a comparable, if not higher pace. So you can see right here, compared to the outlook that was provided or analyst expectations, they did beat on EPS, they did beat on revenue. So you're seeing some strong numbers here. This 970 was higher than the 940 million by that was originally expected. However, something that is important to note is that the active riders of 18.7 million is one of the first declines that we've seen since the pandemic started. 20.2 million were expected. So this is a huge hit because the less riders, obviously the less money. The good news is the people who are using Lyft are spending more. So the numbers look pretty good. However, those costs are just getting eaten alive. So if you showcase kind of what that looks like, you can see that revenue growth year over year. Here is the outlook. You can see Q4 2020 understandably was a large drop. So that's why we're seeing some of that growth. The revenue looks very, very good. And you can see those active riders. This is the first time that there's been a decline since that Q1 2020. So the company has been hitting a lot of pain points. So despite the fact that these rides are costing quite a bit, which again, this is something that we've seen the taxi industry highlight and the taxi industry is kind of coming back, although I don't ever think that it'll be where it once was, but this is not a pretty sight to see over here on the right side, which is showcasing that people with less travel going forward, as well as with more expensive options occurring, that there's trying to stay away from that. So this idea of a contribution margin, I'm going to skip over because that is, in my opinion, a made up number. What I want to look at here is the adjusted EBITDA and margins. So what they're showcasing right here is that on an adjusted basis, they're walking away with 75 million compared to the outlook of 70 to 75, conveniently on the high end. However, if you look at this in terms of a income statement basis, where they're showcasing where this money is coming from and where those cash flows are actually occurring, you can see net cash, they are burning rapidly. So you can see nearly $1.4 billion was burned in 2020. And in 2021, every single quarter bar Q3, net cash was dropping like a rock. So this is a huge concern for me with a total net loss of more than a billion dollars with a large percentage of that of north of 250 million coming in Q4. That's super concerning to me and as such, I have a lot of concerns with the stock going forward and that's why I'm recommending that, or I will not recommend because I am by no means a financial advisor, I'm just some guy on YouTube, but the company over the past two years has continued to bleed money. You can see in 2020, 
four straight quarters of losses. In 2021, four straight quarters of losses, and they still don't have a clear picture to profitability. The only way I see this working is that if they're able to reorganize their cost structure as well as continue to develop in R&D, continue to be able to push forward to be able to get really strong talent to really make this grow, what they should not be doing is continuing to pay massive stock compensation packages to individuals who are not making the company profitable. You can see last year that more than $565 million was spent on stock-based compensation, while the company lost more than $1.35 billion. This year, more of the same in terms of the company losing a billion dollars with $724 million paid out via stock-based compensation. You're continuing to see a failure of management to help the company get to a profitable place. However, those managers are walking away millionaires and billionaires. As such, I have major concerns with investing in the company where only the people at the top are getting wealthy and the shareholders are not. So that is strictly my opinion. That's what I'm going to be watching going forward and one of the reasons why I will not be investing in Lyft or Uber as they fall under a very similar category. So all that being said, if you find this content helpful, please leave a like and subscribe. It really helps the channel to grow. Thanks for watching. Talk to you later. Bye.